how many times have you heard uh, an act there's been a big accident whether it's a plane accident a train accident something like that and people say oh it was human error right it was due to human error the person didn't do the right thing at the right point they didn't notice something that was important and things went wrong so just imagine instead the wing falls off the plane because there's metal fatigue where the wing joined the plane now, you would say it was due to the metal fatigue, but you wouldn't say, oh, that was metal error. You would say it's a design error. Because the designer of the plane, the engineers, the detailed designers, should have understood the nature of metal. And the fact that you do get metal fatigue after a while. You should either design it so that the um, where there's metal fatigue, it doesn't fundamentally mean the plane will crash, or you design it so that you can detect when that metal fatigue is happening and then take preventive maintenance. There are a number of strategies you've got because you understand metal as a material has known ways of failing. We as humans have limits and constraints and ways that we fail in the sense we don't always do things in the perfect way, just like a piece of metal doesn't. As a designer, your job is to understand those limitations of people as actors in the system and ensure the design of the system as a whole works even when those happen. So whenever you hear about human error, it was human error, but typically it wasn't the operator or the pilot or the, the nurse or the doctor in the hospital. It was typically the designer of the system that's there. If you treat users as well as a piece of metal, you probably are dealing with them a lot better than they usually are dealt with. The user is at the heart of what you do. But understand those users, understand the nature of them, and as I said, then you'll start to treat them uh, far better, hopefully, than a piece of metal.